<laughs> hey, what's up, everybody? This is the Pop Culture Junkie here, and today we are announcing the winner of the third annual Halloween Junkie Contest. That's right. So, first of all, happy Halloween to everyone out there, and thank you so much to everyone who entered the contest. Uh, we had 20 people enter the contest, okay? That's huge. I'm really, really impressed. We had 20 people enter the contest, and uh, I can't wait to see who wins. So, two weeks ago, I posted a video saying we were doing the third annual Halloween Junkie Contest, and what we're doing is you watch the video. If you wanted to be a part of it, all you had to do was comment below and put your name, where you're from, uh, share with me your favorite show or movie to watch during October, and then ask me any question you want to ask me. You could put it, you know, any kind of question on there. And then when we did the drawing video, I do a Q and A, and we draw the winner out of the, out of the bucket. And that's what we're doing here today. So today we're going to be doing all the question and answers, and then I'll be drawing everyone's name out of here. And like I said, we had 20 people enter. You did have the chance to get additional entries by sharing hashtag HJC3 on like Twitter, Facebook, so forth. And if you did that, you got five extra entries into the contest. That's right. But like I said, we had 20 people enter. So we have over 20 you know, names in here because we had some that have their names in here multiple times. So that's all the uh, people there. And we're gonna get to that in a second or a few seconds actually. Because first we're gonna go on to the Q&A part. I looked over the questions earlier and some of them were really <laughs> unique. So uh, we'll see what kind of answers I spew out. <laughs> uh, so let's go ahead and do the Q&A because I know everyone wants to get to the contest. Everyone wants to get to the drawing. Uh, but let's see what kind of questions we have. I'm reading these off in no order at all, by the way. So this is just in no order. Just I grabbed everyone's uh, names and everything off of the comment section and just have a list here to read off. All right, let's start the Q&A. Jason from Columbus, Ohio puts favorites are Trick or Treat, Great Pumpkin, Charlie Brown, Hotel Transylvania 2, but he still needs to see the first one. And his question is, what is a horror icon you would like to see NECA make in figure form? Okay, well, first of all, I gotta say, I find it strange you saw Hotel Transylvania 2 and not the first one. And you might actually enjoy the first one more because I did. I really enjoyed the first Hotel Transylvania Second one to me kind of dragged, but the first one was hilarious. I saw that one in theaters, and that was really good. I think off the top of my head, one of my favorite characters, and it's not even a main character, because I know they're going to get to all the main ones, but the one I want to see is, uh, if you guys have seen the movie Return of the Living Dead, that's one of my favorite movies, uh, favorite horror zombie movies, and uh, <laughs> I love the zombie that they first have come out of the cellar, and it's so animated looking, and he's just going, brains brains I, I love that character uh it's it's just a really cool look and i'd love to see a figure based on that one david from san diego california uh his favorites are the great pumpkin charlie brown and he asked would you rather be able to fly five miles per hour or run a hundred miles per hour that's a really interesting question and uh didn't expect this kind of question to pop up on here i gotta say though if i had the chance to fly i'm gonna fly whether it takes me you know, two days to get somewhere or, or an hour to get there, I'm going to fly. Uh, if I could just up, up, and away and go, you know, I, I'd fly in a second. Yeah. Celeste from Humble, Texas. Uh, her favorite is uh, The Nightmare Before Christmas. And her question is, do you know the Muffin Man? Actually, I do know the Muffin Man. He lives on Drury Lane, doesn't he? Very good question. Jennifer from Bronxville, New York. Her favorite is anything horror, but especially classic slasher flicks like Halloween and A Nightmare on Elm Street. All of them. <laughs> what prompted you to start a YouTube channel? Hey, cool question. Uh, so yeah, awesome picks, by the way. Halloween and Nightmare on Elm Street. I gotta say, Halloween might be my favorite of the two, but... Uh, so, what's what prompted me to start a YouTube channel? I don't know if I've ever addressed this or shared this on, on here before with y'all, and I'm not gonna drag this out to a big long answer but honestly I started getting into the subscription boxes uh, just by uh, chance because I came across an advertisement for one of them I think on Facebook uh, this is in 2014 and uh, my wife actually gave me a, a, a like a three-month subscription to I think it was Loot Crate and Nerd Block uh, she got me a box from each one and then ended up getting me a third three month from Loot Crate so those, the Nerd Block was my very first subscription box. And I started getting into these right away because they were really cool and fun. And what I did was I would watch other unboxing videos because I wanted to see what other boxes are out there. I might want to try different subscription boxes. 
Well, I started watching these videos and I was getting very frustrated because there would be individuals that were doing these videos. And first of all, you may notice, okay, as y'all see, I'm not on camera. I, I just how I decided to do the channel when I started this. I've always been off camera here. You can see my hands, you can see me handling the items when we're talking about reviews and not and whatnot. Honestly, what happened was I would watch a bunch of different subscription box unboxing videos and I would see somebody bring out a box and they would do something like this. They would open up a box off camera, they'd be looking at it and they'd pull something out and they would look at it and go, huh, so next item is something I don't know from something before my time probably or something unfamiliar with um uh, yeah i'm not i don't know what this is guys and i'm sitting there watching the video going will you show the item already so i can tell you if i know what it is or not and uh they'd finally be like yeah so here's the item okay so next item and i'm like really you got the camera on your face you want to be on camera i get it some people are really like i gotta be on camera and that's cool that's not knocking anyone out there i'm not knocking any y'all that do unboxings okay but i was just like really people put the item in front at least while you're gonna say you do or don't know anything about it um, but also I get, I see a lot of people that would do unboxings and I'd be like, I know a lot about this stuff or this stuff. I don't know everything at all, but I know a little bit about almost a few things. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that was one of the reasons I started getting into the channel stuff is I saw these people doing unboxings. It really frustrated me because I would want to see the item and not care so much about just seeing their face on camera. Uh, nothing against them. I was just like, Hey, show the item. Okay. That's the point of this. And then, uh, I started realizing like, hey, if I'm going to say that, which I never said that vocally to anybody, I wasn't going to be mean about it, but I was like, you know what, if I'm going to say that or act that way or feel that way, put up or shut up. So I was like, okay, I'll try this. So I tried one out in January 2015. Uh, I got my nerd block in. I set up a nice display and just took a chance at it. And I was like, well, if I'm going to, I'm not going to be a hypocrite where I'm saying like, I got to be on camera to show this stuff like other people. No, I'll just show the stuff. You know, if y'all want to see me one day, we'll see. But that's what got me started on the YouTube channel was I wanted to do an unboxing video and see how my version of it would be in comparison to a lot of people out there. And uh, that's really what got me started. So uh, from there, I, of course, you know, I just expanded to more boxes and other cool things that I wanted to share with everyone out there. Neil from Dallas, Georgia loves to watch the Friday the 13th movies in October. How old were you when you were introduced to horror movies? I was five. I don't remember exactly how old I was. I was probably around five or six, maybe. I remember roughly around five years old. That would be when, um, uh, yeah, I, I was probably about five years old at least because my sister was really into like the horror films at that time, uh, such as like Friday the 13th, Jason, you know, Freddy Krueger movies, etc. Uh, things like that and they would just be playing in the house uh, on VHS or beta back in the day and uh, We'd rent them from video stores. Uh, I never went to a horror film when I was a kid Like I never went to the theater really until probably I was about 12 or 11 first time I went to a theater to see one but uh, Otherwise, it was just when I was a kid We'd have movies playing at the house all the time of all types and you know, that's just how I got the first exposure to them uh, I think the earliest film I can remember kind of seeing bits of was one of the Friday the 13th movies. Jessica from Colorado. My favorite film to watch in October is the Rocky Horror Picture Show. Question is, what is your grail figure? First of all, awesome that you're a fan of Rocky Horror Picture Show. Also, big fan. I love going to shows, whether it's the theater plays or whether it's in theaters at uh, movie theaters, uh, shadow you know, audience ones, participation ones. Love it, and I do have the Blu-ray and all that stuff, and I watch it every year. I watch Rocky Horror. Um, Grail figure, well, and it would definitely be the uh, James on the Bob Strike Back uh, pop figures. Those two right there are ones I actually had a chance to buy them at a local comic store about two years ago, and they had them right there on the shelf for ten bucks each. And I was like, you know what? I'll buy them later. They'll 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 always have these available. Didn't realize those things were going to become so obsolete and so popular so you know, so quickly, and I missed out on them. And I can only find them now for like you know a couple hundred bucks for the pair or something. Uh, if I do come across them, which I I don't really want to do that. I don't pay that much for pops. I really don't. Anytime I buy a pop, it's generally ten dollars, maybe fifteen, roughly. But uh, that would be my Grail pop figures. 
Samantha from California. Uh, her favorite show would be Nightmare Before Christmas. Question is, what is your favorite subscription box series? Uh, that's interesting. I've got a few favorites because it depends on you know the category because I do get boxes from different things. So uh, if I had to say favorite subscription box, period, because of the fact that I'm a diehard wrestling fan, it's got to be that wrestling club. Either one would be the collector's case. I think that's one of the best boxes out there. And then finally, the other one I would say that would be my top would be Video Game Monthly because uh, that's the video game boxes that I've, I've received before. And that box is amazing. That would be my top three right there. Zach from Mississippi enjoys Halloween episodes of Boy Meets World. Question, should WWE resurrect Halloween Havoc like they are Starcade? Uh, that's really cool, man. I love Halloween episodes of TV shows. Uh, that's probably one of my big guilty pleasures to watch. And I have, I probably own, you know, several TV series on DVD solely so that I can watch the Halloween episodes whenever I want to. Uh, like, you know, classic stuff like, you know, Home Improvement, Roseanne. Love those back in the day. Uh, the Treehouse of Horror stuff, that was always awesome and so forth. So, yeah, TV show stuff is always cool. But your question, though, was should they bring back Halloween Havoc? Absolutely. They should have brought that back years ago after they purchased WCW. Yeah, they're doing Starcade later this year in December. And then they just announced, which I'm so happy to live in Houston, they're doing War Games next month at NXT TakeOver. So they need to do Halloween Havoc. I think they need to get rid of Hell in a Cell as a pay-per-view and make it Halloween Havoc. And then if you want to have a Hell in a Cell match at Halloween Havoc, do that. But the name should be Halloween Havoc. It just makes perfect sense to me. Heather from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. I love Halloween. So many great movies and shows to pick from. But I have to say, anything done by George Romero, especially Night of the Living Dead and Tales from the Crypt, is a must-watch in October. My question, do you have a favorite horror-slash-scary video game? And good luck to everybody. Yes, I do, actually. And my favorite one, hands down, would be Maniac Mansion for the original Nintendo 8-bit. If you haven't played it, if you haven't seen it, heard about it, Go find a copy of it. It is, um, it's just awesome. It is not really scary, okay, by any means to someone of my age or anyone, you know, anyone currently probably. Uh, but I can remember I rented this game when I was probably ten years old and took it home, played it on Nintendo in the dark, just you know, just had the light with the t uh, from the TV going, and the spooky music, the chance of getting caught by the professor or his crazy weird family trying to figure out which teens could do what. I mean, it's just a great game. It really is, and, I, and it's probably one of my favorite, you know, all-around NES games. Patty from Florida. So many choices. Definitely all Jaws movies and the classics Frankenstein, Swamp Thing, Jekyll and Hyde, and Dracula. Question, what is your all-time favorite figure or any horror-related item you own? I would have to say, actually, because I didn't really collect horror figures or horror items uh, when I was a kid. I would say currently my favorite is all the horror mystery minis that you guys have gotten to see me unbox over the last few years since they've started coming out with these Funko horror mini figures. I get a, the biggest thrill out of these. It's unbelievable. I have uh, big cases of uh, display cases full of them. I've shown you all on my channel before and of course the pop figures as well but I think the little mystery mini ones have probably been the biggest items I've been able to find uh, that I'm a really big fan of. Anthony from Caldwell, Ohio. My favorite movie to watch in October would either be Friday the 13th Part 3 or Halloween. My favorite show would definitely be It's the Great Pumpkin, Charlie Brown. My question would be, if you could pick the next thing to turn into Mr. Minifigures, what would you pick? It can be something with a wide range similar to the horror Mr. Minis or a specific series like the Stranger Things Mr. Minis. What Mr. Minis would you hope would be included? What would be the most rare? Actually, I would want... For a new Mr. Minis, and I want these made by Funko. I don't want them made by Titans because I don't like the Titan figures that much. The ones I would like is I'd like Funko to do, and they could do this because they've done pops on them. I want them to do Rocky Horror. I want them to do Rocky Horror Picture Show Funko Mr. Minis. I think that would be amazing. And they have a, enough characters and enough variety of characters. Like, you have Frankenfurter, you have Rocky, you have Magenta, Columbia, Brad, Janet, Professor, uh, Professor Scott. Uh, you have those characters. And then you have the different versions of them. You have Frankfurter as the doctor, as when he shows up in the, the fishnets. Later on, you have uh, Riff Raff and Magenta when they're dressed up as their alien costumes. 
and not just their maid and butler suits and such. Uh, then you can have random, you know, the the guests that join in on the time warp, etc. Uh, things like that. Oh, you forgot about Eddie. You have Eddie as well. I would say they should do a full lineup of all the basic characters. And then, as far as, like, the chase figure, I would say it could be either Rocky, where he's, like, solid gold-looking, something like that. You could do a chase version of Frank Furter, where he's in a certain outfit, maybe the Doctor, where he's got the... Uh, the scrubs and the uh, surgical gloves, something like that. That could be the chase one there. Uh, but that would be the one I would want to see next. I haven't heard anything if they're going to make them or not, but hey, they've made Funko Pops and they've made reaction figures, so why not do Mr. Minis? That... Kelly from Mobile, Alabama. I like to watch cheesy, cheaply made horror movies during the month of October for a laugh, such as Idle Hands. <laughs> what is your favorite horror movie of all time? Excellent, man. So, uh, yes, I'm also guilty of that. I don't always go for just Nightmare on Elm Street, Friday the 13th, you know, whatever. I like to watch obscure movies. I like to watch the classic Universal monster films like the original Dracula and Frankenstein and so forth. Uh, but I also get a lot of fun from just watching, like you said, Idle Hands. I love that movie. Uh, there's other, like, scary but comedy ones like The Burbs. Some people don't really consider that a Halloween movie, but that is something I watch every October is the Burbs with Tom Hanks from the 80s. Favorite horror movie of all time? That's a hard call. Return of the Living Dead probably would be my all-time favorite one. It's got everything. It's got action. It's got comedy. It's got just wacky, silly 80s stuff, which I love. Uh, it's got the zombies doing even more gross things. They're they're smarter. They go for the brains for the first time. Okay, it's just all kinds of things that I love about that movie. Gwen from Montgomery, Illinois. Favorites would be Hocus Pocus and It. Question, how many full mystery mini sets do you have? Uh, first of all, is your favorite one It, the original one with Tim Curry, or the current one that's in theaters now? Just curious about that. But you ask, how many full mystery mini sets do I have? Honestly, I only have uh, two full sets. I have several mystery minis from different sets, of course. Uh, the only two that I have that are full, complete sets one is uh, the most recent Walgreens uh, Funko Horror Mystery Mini Series 3. Uh, we just got lucky on uh, finding all of the, the exclusive ones, the chase ones. We got lucky and found those. And then we had all the other ones as well. So that's a full set there. And then the other one I did a video on just last year. It was the WWE Funko Mystery Mini Series 2. We did a full case unboxing and every single figure that's in the set was in that one case. That was unbelievable. 12 boxes, 12 figures, and all 12 were each individual from that series. Unbelievable. That's a once in a lifetime experience <laughs> that that will happen. As many of you know from watching and seeing all the doubles that we get. Jason from New Jersey. Favorite film is Halloween 4. My question is, where the hell do you store all your stuff? Hey man, excellent question. Uh, well. I spent many years as a child playing this game called Tetris, so I find a way to make everything fit just properly right in the best way possible. Uh, truthfully, uh, it, things get a little cramped sometimes, and I have a very loving and understanding wife, thankfully, who allows me to have my area where I keep my uh, collectibles. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, but no, really, I mean, I, I have a lot of things, of course, and you guys see all kinds of cool stuff on the backgrounds of the videos. so. Uh, really, I find ways to keep things in as much of a uh, certain specific area as I can. Uh, I don't have the largest home to where I can do a full layout yet and show you all like a room tour video and like that. Uh, I have had people ask me, can we see a room tour video because they want to see everything and other things too. And uh, But yeah, unfortunately I don't have the space for that. But uh, what I do have the space for, we find a way to just you know keep it all into certain area <laughs> uh, but not to say it's not a challenge Chad Warner from Lucasville Ohio favorites are Hocus Pocus and it's the great pumpkin Charlie Brown question if your life were made into a movie which actor would you want to play you wow that is a interesting question and kind of a loaded one because I don't want to come off like oh well I gotta have Leo DiCaprio play me right <laughs> yeah everyone wants that right or George Clooney there you go yeah uh, you know what? Honestly, I uh, I was thinking about these questions. I told you all before. I looked at these questions just so I could have an idea about what might be you know asked and whatnot. And I bounced this off of my wife, 
And her first reaction was one I thought was crazy, but I'm like, yeah, that'd be awesome. Uh, she's like, oh, if you're going to have anybody per- play you in a movie of your life, if, if that was to ever, you know, happen, uh, honestly, uh, I would want Kevin Smith. I really would. Uh, I, I've followed his career. I think he's amazingly talented, highly underrated in a lot of ways. I know a lot of people are big fans, just like I am, but I do think he's very underrated for what he's brought to uh, pop culture and what he's brought to the mainstream as far as movies and television entertainment as well as just his uh, the way he looks at life. I really think he's a very underappreciated uh, director in a, way, a lot of ways because he has done some very very entertaining work and he's also an actor. He's acted in his own movies and other movies as well and shows. Uh, so yeah I would definitely be honored to have Kevin Smith portray uh, my life. That'd be awesome. Josh from Michigan Favorites are Monster Squad and Trick or Treat. Question, what's your arcade game of all time? First of all, man, Monster Squad is amazing, and I love that film. Uh, my favorite, or my, what's your arcade game of all time? Honestly, it's going to be WWF WrestleFest. If I could own any arcade cabinet, that would be the one right there. Amanda from Reading, Pennsylvania. Favorites, Nightmare Before Christmas. If you were in a horror movie... Which one will you be in? If I could be in any horror film? Oh, wow. Uh, do I get to live or do I... <laughs> am I going to am I gonna make it? Uh, if I could be in any horror film, I uh, I guess it would be... I would not want to be in my... What I just said was my favorite one a minute ago, which was uh, you know, Nihil- or, uh, Return, of the, Return of the Living Dead, because they don't make it. Uh, spoiler alert. Uh, hmm. Favorite horror movie, or what would a horror movie I would want to be in? You know what, I guess if I could be in any horror film and uh, at least have a shot at getting out alive, I guess I'd want to be in one of the Saw movies, maybe one of the earlier ones where you had a you know, better chance of getting out alive if you just weren't so, you know, you know, the people in the movies, you always see them, they're always your, you know, idiotic, making simple, stupid mistakes and such, so maybe there's a chance I'd survive. You know, I don't, I don't think I'd be able to take on Jason or Freddy Krueger, but maybe I had a chance of figuring out some puzzles and getting out with just a, you know, broken limb or something. Scotty, favorite top three movies I like to watch this time of year are John Carpenter's The Thing, Aliens, and Nightmare Before Christmas. What is the weirdest item you have had sent to you? Okay, well, let's see. Uh, I'm guessing you might mean what's the weirdest item I had in a subscription box? Because uh, I haven't had any weird items sent from, from anybody. Uh, you know, I have my P.O. box where people send me random things I've done unboxings for or we did box trades and so forth haven't really got anything weird from anybody I've gotten a lot of really cool stuff actually but I guess if you're asking as far as what kind of uh, what's the weirdest thing I've had come in like maybe a subscription box I wouldn't say necessarily weird but just like bad like really really bad was we got this from Pro Wrestling Crate this was again about two years ago and they had only been out for the box had just started it only been out for a few months and they had a green T-shirt, and the front cover or the front, the front of the shirt, the design was a very large person with a luchador mask on their face, and next to it they had their name, the Revolting Blob. And I'm thinking, wow, who wants to wear a shirt, and it says Revolting Blob on it, uh, let alone someone who may not be the smallest person and not so secure about their body. I mean, that's just. That just seemed like a horrible item and not very well thought out. So that would be my first really come to mind. That would be the worst or weirdest. Last Pharaoh from Oklahoma. Favorites Friday the 13th movies. Question. What is your least favorite collectible and why do you still have it in your collection? So I've got a lot of things that I kept from my childhood. Like I really tried to hold on to as much stuff as possible when I was a kid. I would always ask my mom, hey, can you not throw anything away? Can you keep everything? For the most part, we did keep almost everything. We lost some things on and off, like everyone does. But uh, I remember, though, and I still have these, and I've, I see them all the time whenever I, I move some stuff around, and it's just kind of something that's just in the way, but I don't get rid of it because I enjoyed them when I was a kid. Uh, if you remember, or if it may, this may be before some people's time, okay, I love play sets. So I like, you know, Castle Grayskull, Snake Mountain, Thundercats Lair. I had all those when I was a kid. And those I really enjoy. I had I a lot of fun with those, and I still have them, etc. Um, one of the things that I have still is I've got these Fisher Price play sets and Sesame Street play sets, and you know they're 
kind of hard to find nowadays. You see them sometimes, uh, but I still have them. It's not really like the most treasured item in my collection. I have a lot of other things. I have a lot of other things that I'm really, really happy and proud to own. And these things are it's like, oh, it's, it's just something I had from my childhood. So it really just sticks with me. Uh, I enjoyed playing them because I remember when I was a really, really small kid, I'd be playing them with my mom or my sister maybe, but mostly my mom would play with them with me. And, you know, when you're a little kid, your mom's playing toys with you and such. Uh, but that would be something that really stuck out, you know. that's I guess that's something that really stands out as something that's not the the biggest or most, you know, prized possession in my collection, uh, but it definitely is something I still hold on to for sentimental reasons. Kenneth from Coventry, Rhode Island. Favorites, Nightmare on Elm Street and Nightbreed. What horror pop uh, would you like Funko to make? Extra wrestling question, what's your favorite Halloween Havoc match? Okay, let's see. What would I like them to make that they haven't already made as far as a Funko pop and it's horror related. Uh, I think right away, I gotta say, I wanna see some Return of the Living Dead zombies or the characters from that show. I would love to see Monster Squad as well. That would be amazing to see the full lineup. Wolfman, Dracula, Creature, Frankenstein's monster, all, you know, Frank, as they just call them. Uh, and then the, the actual Monster Squad. I wanna see the boys and the, and the little girl and, and everyone. I wanna see all that. That would be an amazing uh, lineup to see. Uh, the next question he had was, well, what's your favorite Halloween Havoc match? You know, I loved a lot of the Halloween Havoc stuff, and I really just loved the, the atmosphere. That's really what I got into when I would watch Halloween Havoc. Uh, but I think the match just stands out that, uh, two matches, I guess. One would be, and they're both from, I think they're both from uh, Halloween Havoc 98, if I remember right. Uh, one is DDP, Diamond Dallas Page, versus the WCW champion Goldberg, because I think DDP gave Goldberg his best match, uh, period. Uh, at, at that time, Goldberg was just beating everybody in a minute or two minutes tops and then pinning him after one spear and a jackhammer. DDP actually gave him a challenge, and it was a great match. The other match that stands out, of course, is the infamously horrible match between Hulk Hogan and the Ultimate Warrior, or just Warrior, whatever he was calling by then. Uh, that match was atrocious, and if you want to see it, go watch it, but... Yeah, uh, that match stands out because it was, again, two superstars that I grew up watching when I was a little kid. I was a big Warrior fan. I was a big Hogan fan, so it was awesome when I saw them wrestle at WrestleMania six, And to get to see it again at WrestleMania, at uh, Halloween Havoc in 98, that was you know a great surprise because I didn't see that coming. Not during the Monday Night Wars. Didn't expect to see Warrior part of the Monday Night Wars, but he was. Uh, but yeah, that was another match that stood out. Okay, everybody, there you have it. There are all the Q&A there, and I uh, really appreciate the questions. I loved them, thought they were interesting, and maybe you got to learn some more about me that you you know maybe wanted to know. And, uh, hey, maybe we'll do some more of these Q&As if you guys want to. Let's see now. It's time for the main event. This is what everyone's been waiting for. This is the Halloween Junkie Contest 3 drawing. If you're the winner, I will go to the original video where you posted your question, and reply to you, letting you know, hey, you're the winner, please contact me. Uh, you'll have to email me, okay? My email address is in the uh, description of all my videos. Uh, but you'll need to email me so that I can get a address to send you your prize, okay? Uh, whether you want me to send it to like your home or a PO box, whatever you want, uh, just let me know so I can find a way to send you your prize. And uh, you know, then you'll hopefully get it from there. And uh, hopefully also if you win, and you get the prize if you want to, you know, post it out there, you know, share it with everyone so they can see all the prize stuff. And, you know, I mentioned this at the beginning of the video. I said, you know what, I might share a little something about what might be in the box. I'm not going to show everything, but I can't, uh, I can't not show something. So real quick, I want to show you all a hint about what is going to be in the prize box. I can't not show something, right? So if you are the winner, which we're going to draw your name in just a few seconds, here is what will be in your box, okay? You're going to have some other items, but this is one item that will be in your box. It is a Funko Pop, okay? It is a Funko Pop, and it is based on a television character, and you ready to see what it is? It is the brand new Elvira. Yes, you're going to get the brand new Elvira, Mistress of the Dark, where she is wrapped in mummy wrap <laughs> okay this is going to be part of your prize so you will get this exact funko pop in your prize box along with some other really cool stuff so without further ado let's get on to the drawing all right let's shake it up and we're gonna draw our winner now 
All right, we have not looking. Okay, we have one name pulled out. Drum roll to yourself. Our winner of the third annual Halloween Junkie Contest is Heather from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. You are the winner. Congratulations, Heather. You have won the prize box for the Halloween Junkie Contest number three. Congratulations. All right, so Heather, you are going to be receiving this Elvira Mistress of the Dark Funko Pop along with a box with other cool Halloween Junkie related items. And uh, I just need to find a way to contact you. So I will, uh, hopefully you're watching this uh, already, but if not, I will comment to your reply originally from the original video, let you know that you won, and we'll find a way for you to get a hold of me. Just email me. My email again is in the description of all my videos, so you can find it there. Uh, it's a Yahoo email address, so just email me and let me know how I can send you your prize. There we go. There we have it, ladies and gentlemen. The contest is over. I thank you so much for participating. Don't worry. There will be a fourth, a fifth, a sixth. Who knows how long we're going to do this. But there will be another Halloween Junkie contest next year. Don't fret. There will be one. And uh, who knows? I'm going to probably end up doing at least another contest or two way before the end of the year. So stay subscribed. Stay following the channel. You'll not miss out on the next contest or next giveaway. I'll have something going. Don't worry about that at all. Well, thank you again so much, everybody out there, for your continued support, for your loyalty. And thank you so much for the wide variety of questions, because I really enjoyed answering those. And uh, I thank you all again for uh, being a part of this. Now, remember, again, you can always follow along me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And you can check out all my unboxings and different reviews. And subscribe if you haven't done so yet, so you can be a part of future unboxings as well as future giveaways. Thanks for watching. Take care, everyone. Pop Culture Junkie, signing out.